So hi and welcome to the 11th part in this tutorial series. Um, so in this video we will create some timer stuff. So essentially in your main.cpp file we have a main function and inside of that function we have a while loop which calls the render method and the update method in our uh, game window class. So um, essentially uh, your render method should be executed as many times as possible. So yeah, but your update method should only be executed as a set amount of time a second. Uh, the reason for that is that on certain CPUs, uh, this can be called 2000 times a second, but on others 4000 times a second. So yeah, it's unacceptable that certain animations and game logic will be faster on different, uh, will have different execution times on different machines. So for that reason, the update calls uh, should be set so like 60 times a second, while the render your call should be as many as possible. So um, begin with making a define and define call this like updates update updates per second and make it like 60. Okay now uh, default GL, glfw uh, syncs your update rate with uh, the update rate of your screen. We don't want that so to change that you can do glfw set a swap interval and set this to zero. Essentially, this is the this is telling the GLFW that we want unlimited uh, as many as possible uh, updates a second. So now um, uh, there is another function in GLFW called GLF get time and, the, and that will return the time with very high precision. So to do that, create a new variable and call it double. Uh, call this call this less time, and I'll explain all this in a second. But call this less time, and this equals glfw get time. And uh, yes, so this will return and uh, the the current system time in seconds with extremely high precision. So like I, I don't know. But yeah, it's a double. Then also create um, a double called delta time and set this, this to zero by default. So zero dot zero. Um, now I'll explain all this in a second. Now in your while loop, underneath your render call, um, now. Uh, do delta time plus equals jlf get time minus last time and multiplied by updates per second. Now, uh, so essentially, when a program runs, um, a certain time will be set, uh, will be saved inside of this variable. But when the pro the program gets to this point, this time will be a different one. So what we are saying here is that uh, we want to get the current time and minus the last time, so that they get the time that, that has passed between these two points, and this will be like in in nanoseconds, I'm not even sure. In milliseconds, yeah. No, in nanoseconds, I guess, yeah. So, and then we multiply this by our update per second, so in this case, 60. And then we, we add this uh, to a delta variable. And now, uh, create a while loop. And actually, while 
uh, delta time is greater or equal to 1. We want to call our update method. Our update method. Also, we want to we want to do delta time minus okay. So essentially, what's happening here is that um, so here we see that while double time is greater than one, we want to call our update method and then we extract one from it. So we do essentially delta time minus one. So this way, uh, this method only gets called 60 times a second. And uh, the reason is that this is a why of the loop, and not an if statement, is because uh, it's, per yeah, it's possible that uh, for some reason, so the, um, our, yeah, our process is, is very, really slow for some time, and like two seconds have passed without any updates. Um, that way we, will, we won't be short on updates. Yeah, it's hard to explain. But yeah, it's a while loop. But if loop, oh yes, and don't forget to assign less time. So beneath your double time plus equals, type less time equals GLF get time. So, okay, so if you run this, there will be no difference whatsoever for now. But next video, we will um, actually do some animation. So, see you then. Bye.